slip to the word of God. How are you doing, all of you? Hallelujah. Great. It's good. Canada is really doing well. Amen. Amen. Compared with other countries, and God is really healing this land. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. <clears throat> so I want you to know God has great plans for all of us. And God uh, made us so wonderful and beautiful. And He given us a big call, calling. Um, but um, He uh, reveals us uh, only when we are worthy of it. Even though God has great plans in everybody's life, God never created anybody without a plan. So God has great plan. But when that plan is going to be revealed, that you need to come to that stage. You need to be qualified <laughs> to receive the call of God. So, um, even though, like, you know, if you see Moses' life, God had great plan. That plan, when, when was made, that plan was made when Moses was not even born. Not only Moses, actually, the foundation of this earth was not even formed. <laughs> that time, God made plans for everybody, everybody. So, but... God revealed to him only when that uh, Moses reached to that stage. Like, you know, um, you need to come to that stage in your life. What is that stage? You need to come to that position. Means uh, you need to be qualified. There are certain things that God is waiting for you to do certain things in your life. It means God is waiting for you to make certain choices in your life. The choices what you made, God is eagerly waiting for people to make right choices so that He's eagerly waiting to give them their calling. Reveal to them that their calling. So each one of you here is, has a great calling upon your life. God has, has such a great plans for you. But you, you, God is waiting for all of you to, to come to that position. Make certain things in your life. Sacrifice certain things in your life. Give up certain things in your life. Die to certain things in your life. Die to self. Then God is going to reveal His great plan for you and then when the calling is revealed anointing will be released Amen. hallelujah so you know um, God wants like the even though God made us wonderful and beautiful and and, and he made us in his image you know um, when we are born of God right we're all born born again so born again means we are all born now in the image of Christ. In the image of Jesus Christ. Yes, once God made Adam and Eve in his image, but he corrupted that image by disobeying God. But again, Jesus came and we are all born of him now. Born of Jesus now. We are born from him. So we took his, his nature now. So we were in the likeness of Jesus Christ. We are in the likeness of everybody, everybody who's born again, born in the image of Christ. Hallelujah. Is it not wonderful? Awesome. Awesome. You know, you, um, uh, but even though God um, made us in his image now and God has great plans now for all of us but still God never taken away the choice the free will from us 
So he, he, the reason why he did not take away the free will from us, he wanted all of us to have free will, to choose what is, uh, what we want, what is right, what is wrong. You know, God given us that, that free choice, free will. And why? Because God um, wants us to come to him voluntarily, not by force, are uh, not uh, uh, some with uh, somebody's uh, control that God do not want to control anybody. God wants people to come to Him voluntarily, voluntarily submit to Him, willingly and joyfully. That gives Him, God wants us to love Him voluntarily. That gives Him such a pleasure and joy, you know. So if we choose Him, voluntarily choosing Him, you know, so um, that is the reason he never taken away the free will from human beings. So uh, today you, you have to know that who you are in Christ right now. You are in the image of Christ. It means you have his nature right now, godly nature. We all have godly nature. We were all made holy, holy, perfect like him. We're all made righteous now. We're all like as righteous as Jesus, as holy as Jesus now. So there's nothing wrong. In us. We're all perfect to human beings right now, but uh, um, uh, he, he you, you have to believe that you are already made holy and righteous, uh, otherwise uh, you, you should not be deceived by the devil again, like the way Eve was deceived in the Garden of Eden. You know, the Satan came to, the serpent came to her and said that if you eat this fruit, you will be like God. What, what does it mean? What does it mean? She was already like God. God made them already like him only. This clearly the word of God says that let us make man in our own image. They were already in the image of God. And serpent came and told her, you know, if you eat this food, you will be like God. What does it mean? What is that? She forgot. She forgot that she was already in the image of God. She was already like God. She forgot. Enemy deceived her and she fall into the trap. I'm telling you today, the same thing is going to happen to all of us. If you do not know who you are, you already in the image of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So that's why I really want you to know, like your identity now, who you are. I oh, you, Please know who you are in Christ right now. You are in the image of Christ right now. You are righteous person. You don't need to become righteous again. What is that? You know, again, the Satan deceives people that, oh, you do this. If you do this, you will become holy. If you do this, you will become a righteous person. You know, do, do not believe such things. You will not become holy by doing something. You are already holy. Amen. That's where this deception is coming. When you were already made holy, see, you need to got to trust the word of God. What the word of God is saying, we need to trust that word. If you don't believe that you are a righteous person, you end up something doing now with your self-effort and trying to become righteous again and that's when the enemy comes and tempts you and pull you into sin again. Whenever you try something in the flesh, you become a prey to the enemy. Because you've got to believe that you already made righteous, you are already made holy, you through faith you received all that righteousness from God. You already that's why God said that. Because he made you holy, that's why he's giving that command that be holy now. Because I made you holy. That's why he has the right, he has the authority to command us be holy because I'm holy. Because I made you holy. What's the problem now? If when I made you holy, what's the problem for you not to be holy now? What's the problem now? 
Why are you not walking in holiness? Why are you not walking in righteousness? Because as I already made you holy, already made you righteous. Hallelujah. You've got to trust the word of God. What the word of God talks about you. We need to trust because only through faith we received righteousness from God. Not by works. He, he cleansed us with his blood. He cleansed us. He took away hold and given his nature, given his image into us. This is called grace. This is called grace. Because we don't deserve that. When we were in a dirty clothes, when we were in sin, he came to us. He died for us. And he given his image, that which we don't deserve to receive that. But this is called grace. Anything you receive, if you don't deserve to receive that, that is called grace. So that's why the word of God said that we are saved by grace, not by works. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. See, this whole thing happened before. He chosen us, that's why he made us holy, because he chosen us to be holy. And he made us blameless already. That's what he, because out of love, he wanted to do that. Out of love, he given us freely his holiness. He given us freely his righteousness. This is called grace. You know, I really want you to live in the grace. Don't live in religion. You know, if, if religion means uh, if you are living by works, that is called religion. If you are living in grace, that is grace. If you are living through faith, you know, just shall live by faith. Just righteous people live by faith. Because when you know that you are a righteous person, when you know that God made you righteous, because without your works, without you doing anything, just freely you are made righteous. That is grace. Just be believe that only through faith you will become righteous person. Only through by believing his word, what he did on the cross, you were made righteous. That is called just shall live by faith. Righteous people just live by faith. Hallelujah. We are saved by grace, not by works. You know, many people don't realize that they're already holy. That's why they become victims for the deception of the Satan. You know, Satan tried to make us like a, so tiring, in, tiring these things, I'm telling you. People just making so many efforts to become, to be approved by God. They are thinking that, okay, if I do this, maybe God will approve me. God will consider me as a righteous person. That's why, okay, they go, they're going out of the way to do things, uh, feeding the poor, helping the poor, this work, that work. Enemy is just making them crazy. Do this, do this. Oh, if you, if you just fast twice a week, or if you go on your knees, hurt your knees and go from morning to night, be on knees and cry, cry. All these things, you know, it just people just worn out and thinking that if I do all these things, maybe God will consider me as a righteous person and will take me into uh, heaven. But don't be deceived. You already made righteous. You are already made whole, holy. You don't need to do something for his approval. You are already approved. You are already accepted. Hallelujah. Just believe that you are saved already. Your grace, start living in the grace. Every moment in your life, live in the grace of God. Continue to live in the grace of God. The difference is that, you know, this is the difference. Oh, because 
I am not doing something to get his love now. No, I am all, I have love now. God loves me. He loves me. I am already loved by God. I am already accepted by God. I don't need to do anything to get his approval. I am already. I am already a citizen of heaven. I am already a daughter of God. I am already a son of God. So now I am going to represent my God well. Because I am already holy, I have to represent him well now to the world. Then that becomes living by grace, living in the spirit. You don't use your self-effort to do something in the self because when you realize that you already somebody, it becomes so easy to just to represent God's holiness, just to show the world who God is. It is already in you. That's what the grace will operate in your life. Grace of God, the, through grace, through grace, you start living a life which is not possible in the flesh to live that way. By grace, you are able to forgive people. By grace, you are able to love people. By grace, you are able to overcome situations. By grace, you will be able to te overcome temptations. By grace, you will be able to do things. By grace, you will move in miraculous powers. By grace, you start healing people. You do greater things by grace. If you if you start living in grace, the grace of God operate more grace to grace, grace to grace, more grace, 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 beloved. Do you know how much grace is available for us? So what happens is that you because you already believe that you are able to love anybody. You don't struggle to love people because you already know that you started trusting that that the love of God started flowing beloved, inside of you. You are already filled with the love of God. You got the difference now? So what is religion? If you don't believe in the grace, religion will teach us as do something now with your, in yourself that gives us pride. We become spiritual pride. Proud, like you know, you because you used your strength to become somebody, you start boasting it. Yes, I did this. Every achievement when you get it, you start boasting. Why? Because with yourself, you used your self-effort to become somebody. That's how we become proud. Grace makes people humble all the time. Grace puts people in meekness, meek. Because you only trust God for everything. Through trusting, you're receiving the power, the operating in power of God. That's why you end up becoming a worshipper of God, not pride. That keeps you humble and meek all the time. Meekness, you know, what is meekness? Depending on the grace all the time, depending on God. Meek shall inherit the land. Meek shall inherit the land. Hallelujah. Now you know why Moses uh, called him the most humble man on this earth. Because of his uh, humility, that meekness he depends on. He depended before he was not like that. God changed him that way. Hallelujah. So uh, now you, do you understand? What grace means? You know the difference between living in the grace, living in religion? And, um, and also other thing, you know, why we are go after, we try to become somebody and like thinking that, you know, we, all, we always 
feel rejected by people and we think that you know we want some people like a famous people we want to be around them so that we also become famous all these things are coming because you are not realizing who you are <laughs> you already a worthy and very famous and very valuable and precious person you don't need someone else to give you some credibility to you and you don't you don't even feel rejected also if somebody rejects you that will never affect you because you already know your worth your value you know something do you know something else like you know god almighty god god who is so great and powerful wants to live in you and living in you what is that is that not making you so valuable and famous person on this planet earth <laughs> why we need some worldly famous people to make us feel great the almighty god god the creator of the universe so powerful mighty god is living in you is not just living with you he wants to live inside of you is it not enough for us to, uh, to feel worthy some some people that like, always feel worthlessness so is it not enough to feel worthy worthy and very precious you know um when moses asked that question god you know who am i god when moses asked that question when god asked moses to go and deliver people from pharaoh from the hands of pharaoh and he says who am i god when he asked the question who am i god you know god is only replying one thing is saying that i'm with you i go with you that's all he is not telling anything who am i god means i'm with you what does it mean what it means you are that kind of person i want to be with you know that how valuable you are how great you are because why i want to be with you don't you realize that you are somebody because i want to be with you that's why he's telling god is telling moses i'm with you i go with you that will make you someone today you are not nobody you are somebody because i'm with you hallelujah hallelujah that's okay let's see about moses now let's see moses when the call of god how moses received the call of god you know why what, that that's what what i'm saying is today how to receive the call of god how can you know what is what's god's plan for you how it is going to be revealed to you we should be like them like how moses got the call of god when moses you know um when he grew up he you know that how like he was a, he was also an israelite and but when parents saw moses like he born very special like a very beautiful child you know like a, in his face it looks like a belong to royal royal um, face royal family you know something mother saw moses and felt this something different from all of us this child looks something very different look like a royal family royal child then she knew there is a reason behind why god created this child different from all of us then he knew she knew god has a special plan he is going to use this child to bring deliverance to all of us she knew that's why she felt uh, she had to hide the baby from pharaoh because already pharaoh commanded uh, them uh, any male child born in the uh, uh, among israel need to be killed so he commanded the midwives to kill all the male babies 
because they were threatened that this population of this Israel is increasing in number and Egyptians were afraid that they might all gang up, you know, and uh, come against us and uh, they might uh, side with our enemies and they might overpower us. So that's why they were threatened by their uh, increasing in number. So they told, uh, Pharaoh told uh, uh, midwives, uh, when the child born, when the male, if it is a woman, let them live, uh, baby girls, let them live because they are not fighters. So but if it is a male, um, kill them there. When they were giving birth only, kill them there. So that's what the command of the king, uh, but the midwives, they did not do that. So because they, why? They were afraid of God. Because midwives are also Israelite women only. So even though king commanded, they were afraid of their God. They can't do that. So they were just lying to kings, telling that, you know, oh king, you know, these Israel, these women are very sharp. Their bodies are very like active. Like before even we reach uh, there, they were giving birth. <laughs> so that's why we could not get the chance to even see the babies there. They are already giving birth before even we reach there. So they just lied to a king like that and that's how they spared the babies. They did not kill. But God took note of it. God took note of it and God blessed all the midwives. And God given them great families and blessed them financially. And uh, every kindness towards God, towards God's people, God never forget that. God never forget that. God will take note of it. And God is going to reward for every little kind act towards God and towards God's people. Okay. So then what happened? And this child was uh, hidden. And then the, the mother uh, released that baby into the water um, um, in a basket, in a wooden uh, uh, basket, so that it floats. Uh, and the Pharaoh's daughter... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, taking bath there some, somewhere and she saw the baby and she saw the baby and uh, she loved the baby and she liked the baby and she knew this baby is from where she knew Hebrews child she knew but knowingly still she wants to adopt the baby because she had no children so she wants to adopt the baby because the baby is so special and so different, so cute and she loved the baby she wants to have. And she uh, adopted the, the Moses and Moses grew and he came to know his origin, who his, his um, identity, who he was. And he was, a, he was a Jew, he was Israelite and he knew what is the history what was the history background and he knew their forefather was Abraham, he knew the God, God of Abraham, he knew the God of Abraham, he learned the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, he knew and he came to know that what promise God given to Abraham, the promised land, the inheritance, the inheritance in Canaan, not Egypt. He came to know every promise of God to Abraham and he, when he came to know all that, he never want to be in the Pharaoh palace anymore. And he refused to be called as the son of Pharaoh. He refused those royal, the royal life. He refused those riches of his, his, his kingly riches. He refused all that. He wants to be identified with among his people. Even though they were in slavery, he doesn't care. Even they are in slavery, hardship. He wants to be among them. Why? He wants that God. He wants that, uh, that inheritance. He wants to be a part of that inheritance. He wants that God and his people. Let's see that word uh, Hebrews... Um, mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24 to 27. 
Let's read that. Hebrews chapter 11. Hallelujah. By faith, when he was born, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to endure ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Considering the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you see the sacrifice that he made in his life? What a sacrifice he made in his life is that he, he that was okay to go through this ill treatment. That was okay to go through the hardship. But I want that reward from God. I want to inherit what God has for me. The treasures of God than the treasures of Egypt. But because these treasures of this world pass away, pass away, is a temporary riches. But the treasures that from God are eternal. That is greater and eternal. Giving up temporary things, beloved. You know, I mean, this is easy if someone is already in poverty, a very low position, if God comes and you know what? I make you great and you know, I will take you to Kana and where is the milk and honey flows for the Israelites, right? For the Israelites, they were in hardship, slavery. When God told them, I take you to Kana and milk and honey, it's so easy to follow God. Because when you are suffering, hardship, when God comes and tells you, oh, I will make you rich now. I will take you a great place now. You can enjoy we get excited and jump and I want God. I want God. I want to follow God. I give up this. I follow God. Easy, right? When God call you for coming from India to, oh, I, I have a calling for you in USA. I call you to be in Canada. Oh, people just jump and, okay, God, I follow the call of God. <laughs> but I'm telling you, if God calling someone from here, I'll take you to the remote and small village where there's nothing there. I will use you there. Great sacrifice, beloved. It's a great sacrifice. If you're really looking for, I don't want the treasures of this world. I only want treasures of heaven. I want reward from God. He will sacrifice. If God want calling somebody who is rich, calling someone to become poor, how difficult it is. Moses' position was that. He was rich. He had all luxuries, comfortable life. He wants to become a poor for sake of God. He wants to become a slave for sake of God. From kingship to become a slave. It is a hard sacrifice. Great sacrifice. Unless you love God. Unless you trust God. You can never do this sacrifice. Remember Jesus giving up heaven. Coming to this world. To be persecuted by people, to be beaten by people, to take death on the cross, to take speed from the people. What a sacrifice God made. If it's not love, he will never do that. If this is only love, love made him to sacrifice. Beloved Moses 
is a type of Christ. Moses representing Jesus in the Old Testament. Moses representing Jesus. Now tell me, do you think God will not reveal his plan to him? After doing this much sacrifice, do you think God will withhold the plan of the call of God upon Moses' life? God reveals. There's something that I wanted you to know. You are all called. You are all called. But what choices are you making? If you want to know the role, your role in the big vision of this church, the vision and the call of this church is only one thing, corporate vision, kingdom of God, bringing kingdom of God into Canada is a big corporate vision of this church. But what is your role in this vision? What is your call in this vision? What is your role? That becomes your individual callings. Individual callings in the corporate calling. God was waiting that day for Moses. You know how God does things? First, the truth was revealed to Moses. God revealed who he was. What's his background? He was Israelite. And who their God and what inheritance, what promises they have. Everything God revealed to Moses. But now God is waiting eagerly what Moses is going to do now. God always keeps both before you, life and death. And God is waiting eagerly to choose what you're going to choose. What you're going to choose. God keeps you in front of you, the worldly pleasures, worldly attractions, worldly blessings are the blessings from God. What you choose, God is waiting. Always there is something God wants to do. There is always something opposite to that the, from the world. Something offers from the world. When God, God purposely allows that to come into your life. Because God is waiting for your choice now. Because you have two. Then only you will be rewarded. If you have only one option... That's nothing greater in greatness in that. No reward. Because there is two, because you made the right choice, you will be rewarded. You know, God gave for Eve, Adam and Eve, two trees. If you read carefully, this he said in the middle of the garden there is a tree of life. God put tree of life there. God put tree of good and evil, knowledge of both trees. One is forbidden tree, one is a good tree. If they ate that tree, they would have received eternal life. The tree of life also there in the middle of the garden. And God commanded them, choose the right thing. God said that if you eat this fruit, you will die. But there is a tree of life also kept in front of them. God told them what is going to happen. So God is asking all of you today, choose life. Choose right things in your life. But still they choose a forbidden one only. Here Moses comes. In front of Moses, there are two riches of Pharaoh, riches of, in this world, hardship in the world, but later you will receive eternal riches. But Moses chose this way. 
Whatever your calling is depend on what you choose today. Your calling is depend on what you choose today. Whether you receive the call or not, that will decide what you will choose today. Your choices will decide whether you receive the call of God. You were already called. You have a calling. But how is going to be revealed? You don't know how great you are. I'm telling you. Moses did not have any idea. Oh my God, what all God kept for Moses that time. Did you see? What all God kept for Moses? When he was choosing to be a slave that time? But you know what? We think that, oh, he, he made a great sacrifice and we expect that God to talk to him immediately, but he did not talk. Even after making such a big sacrifice, 40 years God was silent. He was not talking to Moses. See, we also expect sometimes things to happen immediately. Oh God, for, yours, for you I did such a great thing. I gave up so many things for you. But nothing good happening still. Still I'm in the wilderness. Still I'm not reaping any blessing. I did so much for you. For Moses exactly that thing happened. After giving up so many riches of Pharaoh, he had to flee Egypt. He had to go somewhere, Midian place. There was nothing, but he lived an ordinary life there. But still God was not talking. He was quiet. 40 years he was quiet. But we think sometimes God is not talking to us. God is not blessing us. Even we sacrifice many things. But that is a mistake, beloved. Never think that way. God actually working in Moses' life. God was not silent. God was not silent. 40 years, God is really, really making Moses a person who can lead a nation, Israel nation, who can deliver from Pharaoh. God is making Moses a mighty, mighty person, beloved. Something inside character God is building in Moses that people cannot see it, but something inside is happening. I'm telling you always inside work, groundwork, People don't see it. Even you yourself cannot see it. But there's something, realization is coming inside of you, beloved. Realization of so many things, you know, God started exposing things to you. Sometimes you feel discouraged and disappointed. So many things been exposed to you. Your character, your nature is clearly, you are able to see it. Oh, why did I do that? Why am I doing like this? So many things is happening. But don't think that God is working in all those things. God is behind in all those things. Time is not been wasted. You know, volcano? How before the volcano comes, what happens inside? What happened? Something is boiling, boiling, boiling. People, nobody knows what's happening inside. Outside, nothing you can see. But when this whole thing built up, built up and suddenly it burst. And how dangerous that volcano one time when it burst. What a damage happens. That's the work. Something cooking inside. Beloved. God is working in our hearts. Amen. He's working in our hearts. Something is happening in our hearts. He's building us. He's shaping us. He's showing things that we never seen before. 
something happening in you. Do not ever think that God is silent or is not working. Hallelujah. You know, Moses, actually the Moses problem was that he thought because he was raised up as a king's son in that palace, maybe he, he, he believed that he is somebody, he can do, you know, his skills, what all he learned in Egypt. Maybe he, he thought about himself, great person, you know, but God, for God, the, all those things have to go from him. He has to become a humble and meek person who can only depend on God, nothing on himself. To make that Moses to this Moses, God has to work in him. God had to work in him. 40 years God had to work in him. It took time for Moses to realize. Finally he realized that that is why he thought before he was somebody. That's why he went and killed. Because he thought that, oh, I can use my strength to deliver the nation of Israel from the Pharaoh bondage, he thought. That's why he used his strength to kill. And he thought by doing such way, he can deliver them, he thought. <laughs> With his own strength. Then he realized he cannot do that. He cannot do that. He was helpless. Why? Because nothing. He lost everything. He lost everything. He had to go. Run away. Run away. Nothing with nothing. Once he was a king. He lived like a king. But nothing now. He had to just run away for his life. And then somewhere he's gone. Midian. And then he married Sephora. And then he lived like in their house. Just for nobody, just then he learned hard way. He learned to depend and he trust God and he learned that then this I'm nobody, I'm nothing, I'm just helpless person. So he became a very humble person. What all he learned in Egypt, nothing worked out for him. He had to empty everything. Then God got him. Then God appeared to him. Then God called him. And then he said, When you are already broken, so broken, nothing, you feel empty of yourself, you are nobody, you are helpless, then God comes and tells you, You know what? Come Moses, I will send you there. You are going to deliver my people. How you feel? Oh, I only have nothing here. I'm nobody. I'm, you know, a very insignificant person. But that time God called him. That's why Moses asked that question, Who am I? The very first thing he asked, Who am I, God? He understood he's nobody. <laughs> That's why God is telling, I'm with you now. I'm with you now. I'm with you. So there you know, you are somebody now. Beloved, as long as you trust in your abilities, in your skills, in yourself, what all you achieved in this world, we cannot enjoy the fullness of God in us. Hallelujah. Then God said, I'll go with you. Certainly I'll go with you. You know, I'll, I just want you to know something. The volcano built inside of Moses. What happened afterwards? My God, what happened? Unusual miracles happened. Unusual miracles. History maker raised up. History maker. No one on this earth ever had that kind of miraculous signs and wonders God performed to anyone on this earth. Moses was that person. 
Moses was that person. He made a history. Tell me, heavens opened, food falling from heaven. Forty years, not one day today, forty years they were fed. From there, food from heaven they ate forty years and they lived healthy. When you are eating a food from heaven, how can you not be healthy? There is no one sick there among them. No one was sick among them. They were given water in the desert from the rock. What a history maker. Red Sea. A sea separated for a nation to walk on the dry land. For their sake, God destroyed Egypt with plagues. For their sake. For their sake. Just because he's not releasing them. Just because Pharaoh is not releasing them. God destroyed Egypt with plagues. Because they persecuted them, God destroyed their firstborn. Miracles happen. But in those 40 years of volcano building up, building up, building up, it was a quiet period, beloved. Nothing was happening. You might be thinking that nothing, God is not doing anything. God is not doing anything. How long, how long? God is doing something. <laughs> He came to know only after 40 years of silent period what God did in that 40 years. He is the person who saw God like that. Glory, glory of God was upon him. That's why his face was shining and the Israelites could not see his face. They were afraid to see his face because he was talking to God directly. That's where the shine, the light, brightness of God was upon his face. People could not see his face. And Moses had to cover his face with a veil when he come to people. When he goes back to God again, he used to lift up the veil and talk to God. What a, who is a man on this earth talk to God like that? Directly. Enjoying God's presence, glory. That's why God said, Who is the man that I spoke? For people, prophets, I speak to them in visions and dreams. But with Moses, not like that. Not with visions, not in visions, not in dreams. But with Moses, I spoke to him face to face. God said, face to face, I was talking to Moses. Wow. Do you see that? He sacrificed such a big thing in his life. Did it go waste? 40 years of silence he had. Did it all go waste? No, beloved. His sacrifice did not go waste. 40 years of silent period did not go waste. It paid him. I'm telling you today, this coronavirus is going and then we, are, we were wondering, Lord, what, why are you not doing anything, God? Why are you silent, God? Why are you not using our churches, so many churches all over the world? Why are you not stopping coronavirus, God? How many people dying in the world, still going on, numbers? Sometimes you're wondering why God is silent. Why God is not doing anything? But God is telling you today, I am doing something in the churches now. God is building us. God is shaping us. God is purifying us. We think that God is not doing your online Zoom, but still God is dealing with your characters. Each 
one of our characters being shaped even in the online watching even at home there's something god is doing silent it looked like a nothing happening silent but something inside of the church why can you know, there's something building up in the inside of believers hearts today one day we'll tell one day we'll tell what happened all this time one day is going to show this is a prophetic word god is giving one day this volcano is going to burst up telling you revival is going to hit the land through the churches amen hallelujah the manifestation of jesus is going to happen in the churches the glory of god is going to come over churches will our churches will rise up and exercise authority on this corona i'm telling you something is going to happen it is not because of the medicine it is not because of the human knowledge the nations are going to be delivered it is because of god amen god is doing something in all of our lives do not waste your time do not take this time lightly do not become lazy in this time this please encourage yourself what all you supposed to change what all you supposed to obey god and what all you supposed to sacrifice things keep doing keep doing the word of god says if you endure till the end you will be rewarded enjoy this time persevere this time please do not waste your time take this time utilize this time use this time to change yourself build yourself in the word of god read the word pray obey god everything you do everything what all holy spirit god is leading you to do in the end time harvest god is going to acknowledge you and use you because you are faithful in all this time because you are faithfully working for god faithfully obeying god and you are that person god is going to use you in the end time to bring great harvest beloved do not underestimate the people in the churches are like look like a weak right now because they are not able to stop the corona don't ever underestimate for moses also had to live in midian for 40 years just like one stranger in that land like a helpless person he was living but you know what how he came out how he came out from that a mighty man of god a history maker who shook the heavens such a mighty man of god was prepared in their forties just please take this time for a preparation god is preparing us for mighty mighty people let's start